is my favorite video of all time. Now, I've got a parody coming up, and it's on the Castaway movie with Tom Hanks and Helen Hunt. Oh my gosh, I love that movie. Well, it took a long time to do that parody. I probably the whole getting ready for the parody, practicing it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, it took um, a good, uh, probably, I'm going to say it took a good 36 hours. Practice, organize it, memorize all the lines, then edit it. Oh my gosh. So I really wanted to show this again because a lot of you are new and you haven't seen it. But if you have seen it, it's still pretty relevant. So it's on the movie Castaway. If you haven't seen it, it's probably not going to make any sense whatsoever. But I would go see the movie because it's really, really good. And then I've got an interview with the most famous Max. And it, it's a really good show. This is my favorite video of all time. So let's go and I'll do a little commentary on things as I go through. Enjoy. This is a nomad out here. How to not feel alone. Well, there's so many different ways. Um, so we're going to talk about that, but there's one way. I bought this from Amazon. They had a smaller version, so I ordered. I thought it would be perfect for the Castaway parody. You'll see in just a minute who's in this box. What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> That's from another movie. This was my idea of putting you in my Time dream world. Moves over us without mercy. It doesn't care if we're healthy or we're ill. Like fire, it can destroy us or it can keep us warm. Now every Amazon has a clock. We live or we die by the clock. And we never turn our back on it. And we never ever allow ourselves the sin of losing track of time. Now, it's 1.50, we have three hours, four minutes, and two seconds before the end of the day package sort. That's how much time we have before this pulsating, cursed, relentless taskmaster puts us out of business. So tick tock, tick tock. Oh, Nikolai, look what you just did. You just delivered your first pine. That scene took a long time to memorize and I will mention I had to go at the park and find a place to do it very early in the morning. There were either some landscapers with blowers going on or you know and I remember a police car going around and thought what is she doing out there? Well this is exact from the actual movie so here we go let's get back to the parody. No, sorry we gotta do this in the car. I like the package. I like the bow. I worked hard at making all of the dialogue in my parody mm -hmm. word Family. for word, except instead of I'm going to keep this on Kelly time, I put I'm going to keep it on Tucson time. But all throughout, I tried my best to memorize oh. it exactly as Tom Hanks did oh each scene. Oh, this is terrific. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep this on Tucson time. Oh, yeah. Well, I got to go. I'll be right back. Oh, crap. My phone died. Instead of a plane crash falling into the ocean, well, I, I go got lost. Now I've run out of gas. can't even call. 
Wow. Okay. My favorite scene. You wouldn't happen to have a match by any chance, would you? Oh, oh! The air got to it! The air got to it! I picked this spot for this scene because with that uh, wood right there with that log, it looks sort of like a cave wall and I could write on it from the movie. It's just like in the movie. I was driving from Flagstaff, five hours, 75 miles per hour. Now I lost cell service here, but I walked aimlessly for about an hour. So that's 50 miles squared, 250 miles times pi. That's about the size of Phoenix. They may never find us. Bakersfield? Bakersfield! This could work. This could work. Okay, Wilson. We're gonna have to hitchhike a heck of a long way. We're gonna make containers to store water. We're gonna have to start saving up food for the trip. No, we got time, we got time. <laughs> yeah. Never turn your back on time. Don't commit the sin of wasting time. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, here comes the big acting job, okay? <laughs> I loved it. It was so fun uh, doing this part. You'll see. Do you have to keep bringing that up? Can't you just forget it? You were right. You're right. It's a good thing we did the test. Because I would have died. I could have broken my leg or my neck and my back. So let's just forget it. What's your point? We might just make it out of here. Did that ever cross your brain? Regardless, I would rather take my chances than to just sit here talking to a stupid volleyball. Wilson! 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 Wilson, where are you? It was really Wilson! dark. Wilson! I had to make sure I didn't fall down. Wilson! 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 Oh, 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 never again. Never again. I know you. I know you. So, we good? Okay, Wilson, here we go. You don't have to do anything. I'll do all the work. You just have to hang on.
offered his voice. He sent me this audio. You look lost. I do? Well, where are you heading, cowgirl? Well, that was just what I was going to now figure out. I had a lot of fun doing this parody. If you have any ideas for any other parodies, I wouldn't mind doing them. They do take a long time, but it was so fun. And I think it's, it's just something different. Today, I want to talk about being lonely as a nomad. I did get a letter. It said, I am a new nomad and I am out here and I'm traveling and I want to go back to where I came from because I'm too lonely out here. So I want to give some tips on ways to connect because that's really where it needs to happen. You want to make those connections. Well, I want to talk about the best way to make a connection. And that is in Quartzsite. Do not go to Quartzsite in the summer. I mean, it gets up to 110, 115 degrees in the summer. Nomads go to Quartzsite in, um, in the fall, the late fall around no end of November and December. And they go all the way through by the time that March, middle March, people start getting out of there. It starts warming up big time. So you don't, it's only during part of November, December, January, and February. Four good months, right? Four good months. Now, I don't know, uh, last year, Paul and I were traveling together and we went around October. It was like getting towards the end of October. Uh, it was horrible. Uh, the flies, it was hot. I started feeling like I was like becoming dehydrated. It was just too much. And why was it too much out there in Quartzsite when um, we ended up going to uh, Tucson? What would be the difference? There's sort of the same climate going on. Well, Tucson has shady spots all over the city. Quartzsite has no shade. You're out there and it's, it's, it's just, it's miserable. You're dealing with quartzite. You're going to want to go towards the end of November. Now, if you are a new nomad, be there or be square or be alone because that's where you're going to meet your tribe. Your tribe is going to be there and you're going to be collecting phone numbers so you can put them in your contacts and that you can, you know, talk to them and, and uh, message them. And I will mention Max was the first friend I ever made in Quartzsite. It was during the RTR and I met him and I was, well, I, I would just walk up to everybody because that's just me. I was walking up to people and he had a minivan. So I thought, oh my God, I got to go meet this person. We exchanged phone numbers. And even after uh, we both left uh, the Quartzsite area, we still texted each other. Well, where are you now? What are you going to do? We would meet again and we have remained friends, very good friends. So um, that's where you're going to start collecting your friends. Now, this year in Quartzsite, we had the meetup, a uh, minivan leads this nomad life meetup. And oh yeah, a lot of people want to meet me, you know, minivan Lee. But my goal was that you got to meet each other and you did. Um, that we probably all together, I think we counted all together people that came, they stayed a couple of days and left. We had 52 people there. There are still people that are uh, still connected and they're, you know, talking to each other. So be there this next year. We're going to have another meetup or be square. Be there, be square. I know, isn't that so cliche, isn't it? <laughs> now, I did look up about loneliness. I went online and what's up with loneliness? One good tip on loneliness, if you're feeling loneliness is a state of mind. It is not how many friends or family members you have around you. It's a state of mind, yes. And one of the reasons why you might be feeling lonely is that you are not being, um, you don't feel like you're your own best friend. Uh, you want to be your own best friend. 
that way you're not going to feel uh, so lonely. You're just like when I lived alone and Max mentions it too in his, in his little um, section here that he lived alone for years, but he never felt lonely. I never did. The only, one of the times when I um, felt lonely is when there are people around me, but I don't feel like I fit in. Um, I just don't. Yeah. And so one of the things is, is when you feel lonely, you don't feel that you're being valued. You don't feel that no, that you don't feel that people are being compassionate towards you. So the solution to that is to go out and show somebody else value. Go out and show somebody some compassion. I've always mentioned when we talk about friends or in a love relationship, if you want a friend, if you want uh, to be in a romantic relationship, make a list of all the things that you want that person to have, all the qualities, and then go be it. You, that you will attract, that was energy. You will attract that energy to you. So basically, being lonely is you just don't feel that anybody cares about you or nobody's showing that they care. So it makes you feel lonely. You could be at a party with a bunch of people, but if you don't have the true confidence, you might be backed up into a corner, uh, what they call the wallflower, and you put yourself in that position of being a wallflower. Well, people are going to sense that and they're not going to go up to you that they, they sense that you want to be alone. So do you want to be with other people that you have to, okay, so there's that fact, go out and be compassionate to somebody else. Show somebody else some value, say something, give them a compliment, and then you're just gonna kind of like fit right in there in the party. What's the next one? Yeah, be your own best friend. Learn to be your own best friend. Be kind to yourself and do things for yourself. Um, do you need to clean up? Maybe you just don't want to take a shower. Go take a nice hot soaking bath. Be kind to yourself. Lotion yourself up. Go have a nice little treat for yourself. Um, uh, make a good, healthy, nutritious dinner for yourself. Go out to eat by yourself. Yes, you can go out to eat by yourself. I think that's common nowadays. Before it wasn't, but I think that's pretty common now. And then, and like I said, find your tribe. Those are people that have your common um, values and have common interests, common hobbies. And what better way to find your tribe than to get to Quartzsite in the winter? One last thing is to remember there are no perfect friends out there because there's no perfect people out there. And so don't just um, expect everybody to per be perfect. If you've made a friend and as long as you think, well, you know, I mean, we do have a lot in common and we have some of the same value systems, but they do maybe something kind of quirky or you think, hmm, that's kind of weird. Yes, people have flaws and just go ahead and accept them. You don't have to be with them connected at the hip all the time and nomads usually don't anyways, but they're going to be a good support system on a social media. You can text them. You can call them. You can say, hey, I'm going to be here. Where are you going to be? Well, you know, maybe a week later, you know, you could say, well, I was going to be there um, in a week. But if you're not going to be there for two weeks, I can wait a week and go be there. So, yeah, those are some tips on being um, unlonely. Is that a word? Unlonely. Yes. There is somebody out there that cares about me. Okay, let's get going with the rest of the program, okay? I'm sorting. All day. Sorting your things, huh? I'm doing okay. Yeah. Well, you've been busy. I feel like I'm getting something done. That's good. Very nice. Look at that picking up. Pork and beans with. Please, sir, may I have a pie? <laughs> Maiden. Maiden.
maiden may partake of my mixture. learned how to camp at the big air shows like in Oshkosh and I'd go on a week trip there I went 32 times uh, years and then I'd take three-day visits to state parks and a lot of times it was alone I didn't really meet any other people this was I, in Michigan right yeah and I just enjoyed being the tourist I'd go down to the beach swim uh, hike so it wasn't until I tried a three month camping trip out west in the winter of December 2018 through like March of 2019. Went back, sold my house, got on the road again in July for eight months until COVID hit. But during that time, I ended up meeting you, Lee. Yeah. Because I was camping alone again all the way across South Dakota, Wyoming. I went through Idaho. And then I ended up in Reno and miraculously found you because I saw the name Idlewild, which there's a town of Idlewild in Michigan that right. I go through when I go to the lake. So I drive in and come and find out you were camping there too. Yeah. And we were there about 10 days then. And we had like six people, eight people right. in our little grassy knoll group. The grassy knoll people. <laughs> and then, the gnome people, yeah. Then we, I got word that there was a caravan in Flagstaff here. So I drove and joined up with about 20 people. And I made several new friends. And ever since then, I've been camping with portions of that first group, either in Quartzsite, possibly Yuma, and then of course here in Flagstaff and in Lake Havasu City. So I've been on uh, camping with other people almost always until I came up here. I didn't know you were going to be here when I arrived, but it was the next day. And it was so nice to have a friend, company. And here's the thing. I lived by myself for many years in my house. I got kind of used to being alone. And I, I have hobbies. I build model aircraft. Uh, I like to read. So I, I've been able to occupy myself. And I would go into town, meet people for lunch now and then. Co-workers where I used to work we would meet, but uh, I can do pretty well by myself. It's no big deal. I know I'll see someone down the road and I can always get on the phone and call somebody. I might mention this, before Facebook, I didn't know my grand nieces and nephews names. And so now, because I have my niece and nephews on my Facebook, I know their children's names now. And it's kind of cool. And and I have uh, texting, I can do messenger. It's not like I don't have to be alone. I can actually converse with somebody without a telephone, for instance. And, but I just don't know, I, I don't feel that lonely. This nomad lifestyle, you can meet new people all the time. You can meet a new person every day on the average. So personalities can be a little bit of a problem. Some Tell people me about are that. Tell some me people about are that. kind of ornery sometimes, or they're impatient. Uh, they're they're not people pe people, um, and they may have trauma. I call some people walking wounded. They're they're out here because they escaped from a bad, bad situation, or they were cheated out of a house, or they were uh, lost a job, and they're just kind of surviving. And you can do that out here if you have a certain amount of income, anywhere from 500 to 1,000, you can live out here just fine. 
So. So, um, do you get along with them pretty good? Yeah, I give them a lot of leeway. I'm very patient with people, and I accept their maybe idiosyncrasies. And mm -hmm. God, look at me, you know. <laughs> I, I like to think I have a decent sense of humor. It's kind yeah. of ironic, right. uh, sardonic. Right. So, yes. Well, yeah, we became friends. You were the first friend I met at the RTR or during that, that right. first yeah. trip to Quartzsite. You were my friend. And I will say we exchanged phone numbers and we stayed in contact the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. We did. So we've been friends for almost three years now. Mm -hmm. So what any advice you'd give to somebody who is just getting started out and is worried that they're going to be lonely? It's nice to get a few phone numbers when you meet someone so that if you're down the road and you're kind of wondering and you're getting ready to go somewhere else, you might call them or contact them and say, where are you going to be and say another week? Try and plan your arrivals in new places where you think there'll be some of your friends that you've met along the way already. That's always a big thing. Uh, I would say that is what I do. And a lot of them are on Again, Facebook, they're friends. Great nomad society out here. I think they're lonely because they haven't reached out and maybe they have a inner feeling that they don't fit in and they're fearful of that. Mm -hmm. But I would just say open yourself up to talking to people but don't click you there's a lot of people out here I would say that this community wants to help and I learned this a while back someone wanted to give me something and I didn't really need it uh, and it's something I could have used maybe a little later and it could be food and a flashlight, an ink pan, it could be anything. A tarp. Something they have left over. But I found out this. People want to help. And if you are offered a gift, take it. You might end up gifting it to someone else. But people want to help. They want to know that they are part of your life. And so I always accept gifts. That's a great advice. Especially from little kids. <laughs> but their families over there, they come running over with a piece of candy or a, a, a toy, whatever. I, I remember recently a, a little kid come running over from his family, and I'd already met him, but he wanted to give me a gift. And I said, Well, thank you. And he felt good, like he had been part of something. Thanks for watching everybody. Thanks for spending time with me today. Don't forget net gators. I know. Um, it really is a way to support me. Some more parodies. That was actually kind of fun. And um, uh, give me an idea of a movie. I want something that most everybody has seen so they don't go, what the heck is this? But you will understand it because you've already seen it. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun. Now, now. Yes, I know you did. This is my new friend. So I'm not lonely anymore, right? <laughs> Wilson. Oh. Wilson! <laughs> then, um, <laughs> let's get up. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Up and down, up and down. Got the book. Um, How to Live in a Minivan. Uh, the Minivan Lee Way. Yeah. And so if you want to give a gift, on minivanlee.com. Please subscribe and give me thumbs up. It really, really does help. I love you guys. Mwah. See you next video. Bye.